There's someone right there with a hand. Yes, do you have a question? I'm a teacher, and I'd just like to know what you would do as president as far as our secretary of education goes. What are the most important things to you? And what do you teach? Fourth grade. I don't want to talk about uh. math problems. <laughs> I was just so happy that I got it right. I can't tell you. Uh, uh, first of all, thank you. Thank you. Thank you for teaching the fourth grade. Thank you for being a social worker. Um, um, I, I, I would like to put somebody in that job who's walked in the, in the footsteps of the teachers in this country and also the kids in this country that are living in poverty. I, for reasons that I won't get into, when I was first running for this job, I often got accused of not being qualified to be in the Senate, which was meant to hurt my feelings. And people would say, here's why you're not qualified, because you've never run for office bo before. And I'd say, you know what I wish people did before they went to the Senate? Teach in a high poverty school for 10 years of your life. So you can understand what's going on in, the, so you can understand what's going on in this country. And on, on the, just the teacher pay question, which you didn't ask, but I'll just mention, we got to understand, people, that we are living in a country where we have inherited a system of paying teachers that was developed when we had a labor market that discriminated against women and said, you can have two professions. One is being a teacher and one is being a nurse. And the whole design of it still imagines that humans are shackled to that labor market. And it doesn't exist anymore. And until we, until we figure that out, we're never going to pay teachers as the professionals that they are. We're going to continue to lose 50% of them in the first five years of the profession. And this achievement gap that we have in this country will never be solved. One of the reasons I'm running is I'd like to be the education president. We've got time for one more. Hi. Yes, sir. In the tie. Hi. Uh, thank you for taking my question. Thank you, Vladimir. Yeah. I work for city council, and one of the questions constituents always ask um, is regarding gentrification. That seems to be a thing nationwide, really, across the big city. And, but we understand that. So their concerns always terms of uh, affordable housing is that the, the guidelines and criteria to determine uh, affordable housing um, doesn't match, right? So what they'll say is, well, uh, what they claim is a, a low income is high income right. for a lot of, um, yep. uh, especially New York. Yep. And we understand that that's something that's um, linked to the federal government. So how, how is any yep. fix you would have for that? First, let me say that I used to work for a mayor, and one of my jobs was going to city council on Monday night to get yelled at by the city council. And the first night I ever got back from that, my kids were very young, and they had seen it on TV, and they, all they wanted to know was, how did you get inside the television set? And, <laughs> and, and what did you do to make those people so mad at you? So I know a little bit, but I think there are three things. One, we got to uh, fully fund housing vouchers in this country. Half the people that are eligible for housing vouchers in America don't get those housing vouchers. Second, we have to build a lot more housing in the United States, and that's going to require much better alignment between the federal programs that you're talking about and local government's decisions on zoning. And all of us in America are going to have to suck it up and realize that we're going to need to have more density in this country if we're actually going to have affordable housing. And some of the most progressive cities in this country are the least... Uh, embracing of that sort of housing. And third, a, a point that you didn't ask about, but it's related, we've got to figure out how to address evictions in the United States of America because we are destroying families, the ability of people to hold a job and hang on to housing because too often we use the remedy of eviction when a less onerous remedy could actually make the difference. So thanks. Ladies and gentlemen, Senator Michael Bennett. Thank you very much. Thank you very much.